Y'all, Catfish redeemed themselves this week, y'all. Let me tell you, I was a little bit wary, but Catfish came through. Because, baby, when I tell you, if I was going to have to deal with another one of these little slow episodes, child, I was going to have to. What's going on, y'all? It's your favorite Auntie Momo. We are back again for another episode review of Catfish, y'all. I love this episode. Let me just go ahead and let you know. This is season eight, I believe, episode 35, Imari, and question mark. We don't got damn no. But look, before we get into this review, y'all, y'all already know how my church announcements go. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel if you ain't already. Y'all already see I be giving y'all these hot fire catfish reviews. Go ahead and subscribe now. It's free. Now, if you want to pay for something, the membership is down below, okay? Make sure your notification bells are turned on so you already know when I got that good hot fire. I think I already said that. I don't know. I've been drinking, so I didn't say it again. And, um, yeah, all that good stuff. Um, y'all like my bracelet? This from my girl, Shawana at Nappy Nerd. I don't know if y'all can see her little logo on there. Nappy Nerd. Her information will be down in the description box below. Where you can get this, you can get other beautiful black girl magic from her. All her information will be down there, IG and all that. Also, I want to give a shout out to Cola James. Cola James, that's my YouTube baby sis turned family. She does Nature Boy updates. Now, if you know Nature Boy, you know Nature Boy, okay? He's big on Beagle, starting to merge over, get really big on YouTube. That's because a lot of people cover him. If you're into Nature Boy, I know it's a whole lot, a whole lot of going on with him. Make sure you check out Cola James. I will leave her information, her uh, YouTube channel down in the description. And it's Cola James. You can find her just like that. Um, I will also leave her IG. She does custom originals, okay? Um, original glasses, meaning like mugs, pimp cups, all that stuff. She can customize bottles for you, bling it out, all of that. So make sure you hit up Cola James. And if for nothing else... Like I said, she got all the Nature Boy tea. It's Nature Boy. I don't know, Sun Valley Rice Krispie. It's a whole lot of them. Sunflower. It's a bunch of them, you know, jungle bitches. You know, that's what I call them. They some jungle bitches. Jungle niggas, whatever you want to call them. It's a whole lot, a whole lot of them. Cola got all the tea. Make sure you holler at her. And just my description box in general. I got all kinds of goddamn hot fire down there. I was trying to tell y'all. Damn. Oh, and while you're at it. If you got any questions, you want to hit me up for anything, just anything you want me to review, email me at realqueensrealtalk at gmail.com. Also, make sure you join me here this Sunday and every Sunday at 7 p.m. for Real Queens Real Talk with a gentleman's perspective where me and my lovely panel of co-hosts, sis, YouTube sisters and brothers, turn family, and we talk about everything from celebrity news and gossip to current events, even some good YouTube or Beagle drama if that goes down, Okay. Real Queens, Real Talk, here this Sunday and every Sunday, 7 p.m. I enjoyed this episode of Catfish, y'all. They redeemed themselves this year. I think my favorite part of Catfish actually was the end because it ended so beautifully. And if you don't know how it ended, don't worry about it. So auntie fit to tell y'all. So hopefully y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's go and get up into it. All right, y'all. So Neve and Kimmy get an email from Imari. Beautiful name. I-M-A-R-I. -I. I have a um, nephew named Damari. So just Mari is just cute to me. But um, Amari, she's 22 years old. She's from Ohio. Now in the email that she sent to Neve, she said on there that she has been talking to somebody for the last three months and they were actually a former catfish on their show before. She didn't give a whole lot of details of anything, but that this person used to be a formal catfish. And when Neve and Cammie finally get on the Zoom with Amari, she gives them a little bit more hands. She says that this person was, you know, on 106 in Park. This person was a musician. So come to find out, child, it was deep pimping. Y'all remember goddamn deep pimping? Child, this the little heifer that claimed to be Bow Wow and was out here catfishing this bitch she really thought she was talking to bow wow which and this was before this is before i even had a youtube channel i wasn't reviewing this episode if y'all really want me to review that episode drop it down in the description box let me know i'll review that because i actually like d pimping at the end of the episode and when they did the follow-up with her child let me tell you about that real quick so when 
What had happened was D Pimpin, like I said, was pretending to be Bow Wow Child and was calling the shit out this girl. Why the girl thought she was talking to Bow Wow anyway, baby? I don't know. But when they did the where are they now with D Pimpin, D Pimpin had got shot, bitch. She got shot all up in the stomach and it went through the stomach and then came out the back. I mean, the bitch is a rider. Tupac in this bitch. She lived. But when they had met up with the pimp and when they did the reveal on her child, how about this heifer say she likes to get straight women. She got a for, a for real lamb skin. Um, I don't know if you can say it, but shit, I say everything else on YouTube. She got lamb skin dildo and she out here pulling straight women with the lamb skin dildo. They don't even know. She poking through the boxer shorts. Girl, bitch, look, bitch, it be pocket. Poking through the box of shorts like this. Them hoes don't even know. It come out like this. <laughs> bitch, it come out like that. They think it's real. They don't, it's poking through the box of shorts. You a peekable bitch. They don't even goddamn know. But that's what D. Pippen was into. She was like on some real shady ass goddamn shit. Aside from the fact the heifer was pretending to be little Bow Wow. But it actually pay, it paid off for her because she went on 106 and Park. Bow Wow brought the bitch out on 106 and Park. I mean, hey. You gonna pretend to be me? How about you meet me? You know that's what it was with that. So it's D pimping. Now what she said, she actually reached out to D pimping about doing, um, telling her that she liked her music. Now she said, you know, she she was a fan of hers, and when she reached out to her, D pimping actually reached back to her because she seen that her Facebook page was active. She was interacting with different people, so she was hoping that she would reach back out to her, which she did. Now Mari says after she had talked with D, I'm gonna just call her D pimping. We are gonna call her pimping, okay? Because I just ain't got time to say all that deep pimping and all that. Because I just want to get into it like I can get into it. Because you know I'm trying to be all proper and all of that. But now let me just go ahead and get into it. So she was talking to pimping, right? She had reached out to pimping because she was like, look here, bitch, I like your music. I'm a singer songwriter out of Ohio. Beautiful brown skin, chocolate sister. Had her braids laid and all of that. I was like, Mari was like, y'all got me fucked up, bitch. I'm finna come home for ladies' house. And she did. Shout out to you, Amari girl. You was makeup, hair. All of that. So, after she was talking to Pimpin, Pimpin told her, you know, like, let me hear some of your music. Whoop do you, yada, yada, yada. She ended up sending Pimpin some of her music. Pimpin was like, oh, cool. This is, you know, I can rock, rock to this shit here. Let's do a collab one day. She like, oh, you know, that's good, you know, because that can help get her career off to the next level where she needs to be. You know what I'm saying? So this would have been a big opportunity for her. So after they were talking through Facebook, they quickly developed a friendship. We're talking on a regular basis, talking every day, but she refused to video chat with her, which now Maury, you my girl, you know, you my girl and you look smart as fuck. So you should have known something was up with the nigga didn't want to goddamn uh, FaceTime and all that. I'm just saying, you can hold up a post-it with my my name on it, bitch, and you can send it to me. He didn't do that either. But I give it to you, girl, because she was pretty girl. I like them braids. Ooh, braids was there. I had braid her thoughts up. That shit was so goddamn tight. So, she actually has made plan. Well, not set in stone yet, but she is planning to go to Atlanta, because that's what Pimpin' is. Planning to go to Atlanta and hopefully do a collab with Pimpin' one day, but she got to know who this mofo is. She even tried to call Pimpin' one time, Pimpin didn't answer the phone, but gonna send a text message back talking about, oh, my bad, I'm busy, I'm gonna holler at you later. Pimpin didn't never call back. So she's like, oh, no, bitch, you trying to pimp somebody, but bitch, you ain't finna pimp me. Now, Mari says the relationship between her and Pimpin is strictly business. They've only talked about music. It ain't nothing sexual, nothing like that. Amari says she's an artist, okay? And she's sensitive about her shit. So she, we, she needs to know who the hell this is because she didn't already let this person, you know, listen to some of her music and all of that. And if she hears the shit on the radio, she going to pull up on the grass in somebody goddamn mama house. So she needs to know who the hell this is that's out here catfishing bitches and bitches is catfishing. So then you say, fuck it, I still got a goddamn number in my in, in the catfish phone. Let me go ahead and call the bitch up because if it's her, she shouldn't have no problem hollering at me because bitch, I'm me. I found the whole first place. So, child, they end up calling Pimpin'. Pimpin' answer the phone. Hey, Nene. Cool as hell. I like Pimpin'. You should have did what you did, but then the girl should have known she wasn't talking to fucking Bow Wow, but I like you, Pimpin'. You all right with me. Pimpin' was like, what's good? They said, Pimpin', Pimpin', Pimpin'. I'm going to need you to get on this goddamn Zoom call with me because, bitch, we need to ask your ass your shiesty ass some goddamn questions. We cool or not, bitch. I remember your ass. So she ends up getting on a Zoom call. Of course, Imari is like, oh, my God, 
it's you. And so, you know, Neve is like, hi, you know, it's good to see you. And Pimpin' like, what's going on? What's good? Imari say, it's nice to finally meet you. Pimpin' say, it's nice to finally meet you as well. Nigga said, er, what you mean? It's nice to finally meet you too. I thought, you, wait a minute. Fuck is you doing, Pimpin'? Pimpin' say, I oh, don't nothing. I'm just trying to turn on my charm. <laughs> trying to turn my swag on for you hoes. Child, Pimpin' just make a small talk. She ain't know that goddamn girl from a can of goddamn paint. Well, come to find out, Pimpin' say, after she was on the show, somebody had hacked her page, reached out to her, sent an email to her old manager, Tony, and tried to extort $5,000 to get the goddamn page back. Was like trying to get that shit from them for a while. Pippin was like, fuck you and that page. I ain't got that money to you know, do that shit, so you're not finna get it from me. And so now, Pippin ain't been able to go back on her page and try to even do another page because... Whoever this fake pimpin' is that stole her goddamn name so she can't even make a whole new account with her original pimpin' because somebody done already stole her pimpin'. Now, pimpin' say that the manager Tony, the old manager Tony was the one that actually talked to the person that tried to extort 5000 from them for, for that old Facebook page. Now, pimpin' said him and Tony had a little falling out. It wasn't nothing too big. Tony still thinks that they cool, but Pippa said, I ain't really fuck with that nigga, but you call this motherfucker if you want to. I ain't really fucking with his ass, right? Now, before he calls the Neve, it's like, well, let me just verify the number that you have for your old manager to the number that Imari has. They verified the first six numbers. The numbers was not the same. She said, oh, Lord, thank you, because I thought I was going to have to whoop somebody ass. Turns out it wasn't him, right? Now, at this point, they still sort of side eye and pimping because they like, bitch, I don't, I don't, I don't know about your ass because you done did some shite ass shit. But at the same time, they sort of lean into the fact, well, what if it's the old manager? Y'all done have fallen out or something, and is it gonna want to give you your shit back? They still look at this motherfucker kind of sideways. But now at this point, pimping invested. She like, look here, <laughs> my pimping on the line. I'm gonna need y'all to find out who the hell. This goddamn fake ass pimp is trying to steal my goddamn shit. He can't steal my shine. So it's time to investigate. They look up the phone number first and the phone number is registered to an Eric Johnson out of ATL shouting. So they know the motherfuckers in Atlanta. That's about all they know. Then they look at the Facebook page, the one that's been hacked, that's the, the, the fake pimping, and it goes back seven years. It's active. They're engaging with different people on there. The page looks legit for real, right? So, they look at the manager Tony's page. They start investigating his ass. And again, they like, what if this motherfucker was mad? They had that falling out. And what if he claimed that he cool with, him, uh, with pimping, but really, he's still in pimping's pimping. And we don't know nothing about it. So, as they're looking through the page, they see some videos of pimping. The, the pimping, pimping, real pimping. And they see her on the video and she rapping, doing her thing, thing, right? Now, when it comes to the, the audio videos of pimping, the voice is completely fucking different. It don't sound the same at all. Like you can tell that the shit actually sound auto tuned. It is even if it was her auto tune, it didn't sound like her at all. And then it said on there that it was a collab with D pimping. What was that nigga name? Keezy and Jay Lens. And they like, well, who the hell is that? Cause that nigga didn't uh, pimping and say nothing about. She had co-pimping, so who the hell is this? So now what Neve is thinking is that whoever this person is, whether it be this Keezy or this Jay Lynn's, that this person is actually using Pimpin's image or using Pimpin's clout, basically, to promote their own music. That's what they think because they're like, well, who the hell else could it be? Because it's obvious it's other voices that's on the audio, but who the hell is these other niggas that's rapping with this person? So Tony actually calls them back and Tony does verify the same story that Pimpin gave, that somebody hit him up in an email, they hacked his booking email page, that was his booking Facebook page, hacked it, got into it, tried to extort 5000 for it, he said no to hell with it, and so boom, boom, yada, 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 here it is seven years later, and they still ain't got the goddamn page back. So again, they they still side eyeing Tony. They side eyeing Pimp because Pimp, you did some shady ass shit. But then it's this Keezy and it's Jay Lynn. So child, it's it's just weird. So Neve and Kimmy end up hollering back at Imari and Pimpin and giving them all the tea about everything they found. Right now, Neve is once again asking Pimpin. Now, Pimpin, 
We know you done did some shady ass shit before, but bitch, I got to ask you, got to ask you again one time for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Are you sure? You ain't wasting everybody's time and energy, and it's really you that's behind this catfish. She said, no, I'm not going to give up my pimping for none of that, because this page had like 18,000 followers. Like, the page is popping, so I, I, I believed her, too. Like, I'm not going to give up. You know, what I got going just for, you know, now. But then Cameron was like, well, bitch, what if you're trying to redeem yourself? What if you really catfishing like you somebody else, but bitch, you catfishing yourself as a catfish? Now, people say, look here, I need to find out who the hell this is because they still in my shine. I need my hoes. So then you say, fuck it, let me go ahead and call this something that you got. Need calls fake pimping, right? A female answers the phone. Need was like, uh, hello. This needs some catfish. May I speak to, uh, is, is this deep pimping? And she was like, hi, how are you? And he was like, yeah, I need to speak with you. Click, click, the bitch hangs up, phone. I said, hey, these hoes go hang up this goddamn phone. Y'all don't get enough of disrespecting my son now. Neve is my son in my head. Y'all don't get enough of disrespect my little nigga like that. Don't even do that to him. So Neve was like, all right, cool. I ain't even doing no tripping. Neve said, this one I finna do. He sends a bitch a text message takes a picture of all them in a Zoom and sends a damn picture to her. Like, bitch, come outside. <laughs> ain't nobody gonna jump you. He also let the bitch know in text message, we know you ain't goddamn real. So I'm gonna need you to go ahead and hop on this Zoom before we show up at the grass at your mama's house. That's my favorite goddamn line. Shout out to Yo-Yo. <laughs> the next day, Neve done got a text message back from the fake pimping, right? Now it says, oh shit. Pimping, pimping in the picture? That bitch mad than a motherfucker, ain't she? <laughs> Nigga like, come on now, stop playing that goddamn game. Nigga, we know that you ain't you. She know that you ain't you neither, goddamn it. She, she know that you ain't her, that you ain't you, goddamn it. You gonna get in this goddamn Zoom or what? So finally, fake pimping answers back, and it's like, okay, fine. If this is my only chance that I can meet Imari, then we gonna go ahead and do this, right? So at this point, we got everybody on the Zoom. We got Neve, Cammy, Imari, and Pimpin' Pimpin', right? They all sitting there waiting because at this point, fake pimpin' said, don't go, you know, go ahead and drop me the line. Child, they sitting there waiting, waiting, they sitting. They get on the goddamn Zoom. Nigga, it's Keezy. They looking like, nigga, who is you? Child, when I say this nigga Keezy right here was finessing the blood, this nigga say, oh, I have to write shit down because bitch, it was a lie. He says he thought this shit seven years ago. After he seen the episode that Pimpin' Pimpin' was on, he noticed that Pimpin' ain't had no Facebook. So this nigga somehow or another made a Facebook, hacked into the other information, and that's how the shit took off from there. This nigga, you want me to tell you how smooth this motherfucker was? Okay, so look here. Females will try to holler at Pimpin', right? He would be like, oh, yeah, cool work. This is what I need you to do, though. Go ahead and holler at my brother. My brother going to send you some music. We going to see what we can do. Yeah, you know I'm saying? This nigga was finessing the plug, bitch. This nigga went as far as printing flyers. Got his homeboy Pookie in them to dress up as MTV film crew. Niggas had motherfucking earphones. Niggas had mics and badges and t-shirts and utility belts and shit. This nigga had hired a fake ass photographer following all of them around. They would go to the club like they had they opening up for pimping when really they go up there and they perform and when it's time for pimping to show up, they say pimping is sick. Now ain't that some bull shit. This nigga basically came up and got game off of her name. Now, he just said, you know, they didn't give me the money. I just, you know what I'm saying? Fuck it, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I start taking it, and, you know, just getting my cloud up from there, getting my music out up from there, and the shit just started, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Money over money over money. You know what I'm saying? This nigga is a sound engineer. So what he had did was he would get after whomever would do whatever they part was on the song or he would do his part on the song, he would go in there to the studio, fake like he pimping and try to do the sound of the voice like her, put it on the track and bitch here you go hot fire. I said, if that ain't no motherfucking genius shit, that's why these young niggas need to be out here doing something with themselves. If you were smart enough to do that seven years ago, oh God damn, think where you could be in life right now. 
This nigga, he straight up said what I like about the catfish though. He was honest about it. He was straight up about it. He said, I did it for the clout. I was willing to do anything for clout. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, well, how come you didn't at least reach out to Pimpin? Because, you know, Pimpin would have been down with the shits. You know what I'm saying? She come with the shits. He was like, well, you know what I'm saying? Once I got that clout, I ain't see no point of really calling her. You know what I'm saying? Pimpin like, what? Just fuck me, huh? Yep, basically, it was fuck you, pimp. And I said, God damn. His plan was, when Mari got to ATL, shouted that he was going to reveal himself like, hey, it's me. It's your boy, Keezy. It's really not pimping. It's me. You know what I'm saying? He says he really does like Imari and that he does want to collab with her. He said he wasn't talking to any other females like that, that he really does like Imari, but ultimately he wanted to collab with her and he wanted to make some music with her. So again, the nigga was on that whole clout shit, right? So check this out. My homegirl Mari said, well, this is what we gonna do. You know what I'm saying? Since you like clout, and uh, uh, I'm trying to get me some with my damn music and uh, Pimpin' is with me. How about we do a whole transfer of clout, nigga? How about you send your bitches to come and they be our bitches and we can all have our bitches. Not bitches, y'all know what I mean. You know, fans. That's what I mean. You send me your fans and we can all have fans. You know what I'm saying? We gonna transfer the clout. merry go round in this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Give back what you done goddamn took. Pimpin' whole thing is like, you mean to tell me hoes been trying to get at me for seven years? <laughs> and you been holding that cool down on me this goddamn long, nigga? Pimpin' want her goddamn page back. Keezy like, cool. You know what I'm saying? I'll make music for you. I'll make videos, whatever I got to do. You know what I'm saying? Or to make the thing pop. I got you. So in the end, they did the two-week follow-up. And in the two-week follow-up, child, um, Imari... And Pimpin all went to Atlanta. They was all in the studio with Keezy. And they actually did a song. They're going to collab some more in the future. And it actually ended really, really good. At first, I wanted to go in on that motherfucking catfish. Just the way he was talking. He was sort of cocky and arrogant with it. But he made up for it. In my opinion, I feel like he made up for it. Because he, he transferred the clout to them. You know, he... Came through on his promise to make some music with them. They went out to Atlanta and they did their thing. And I thoroughly enjoyed this episode of Catfish, y'all. If y'all seen it, if it was anything I missed, y'all already know what to do. Drop it down below and let me know, okay? Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. Mm -hmm.